Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello. How's it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far, or I hope you're starting off your day with a good positive mindset. Um, today, I want to talk about um, our moods and our mental health a little bit, and the things that play a factor in our moods and our mental health, and specifically food, our diet, what we eat on a day-to-day basis, um, or just what we eat in general, and how how that can really affect um, us mentally. You know, it's not just physically. We don't just eat food to have energy to fuel our bodies to so that we can move around and have enough energy to go throughout our day. Um, we need our food to fuel our brain as well. Um, and your diet can really say a lot about, um, can kind of give you answers, I should say, about your moods, how you're feeling, your mental health. Um, it all kind of plays a factor together it all kind of comes full circle so I just thought I would talk about that today I've been on quite the little health kick or I'm trying to be on a little bit of a health kick and researching lots more into foods and what they truly do for our bodies and one of the reasons I've really wanted to go on this kind of health kick is because my my energy has just been low and you know I, I, I work out a lot I'm really busy but you know I think it's because my diet hasn't always been I'm not I'm not always feeding myself, uh, I think, the proper food I should be. So having that low energy um, with a kind of a negative mood or you're grumpy, you just feel kind of off, it's not really a great combination and it definitely sets you up for an unproductive kind of day if you're waking up and feeling like that. So that's why, you know, I've just been doing lots of research. I find it so interesting because the things that we are absorbing, we're putting into our body, just plays such a large role in so many things. Like I said, it's not just our physical health. It's not just having that energy to move around and get active and, and carry on with our day. But it's the effects on our on our brain and us mentally. And, you know, I don't I think it's really hard to notice a huge difference um, or to understand the difference, I should say, um, with how food really does affect you until you see it firsthand. You see it for yourself. And, you know, if you've ever kind of, you know, just haven't really cared about a diet for a while and then kind of got on a good health kick, you notice obviously you do have more energy because you're fueling your body with better nutrients and healthier food. Um, but you're also just mentally in a better place. Um, it good food, healthy food. I'm definitely going to go through some specific foods that help your mental health and give you some positive moods or should enhance your mood um there's lots of different things that we can absorb and we can eat um that really plays a role so when when you start noticing oh i'm i'm fueling my body with the proper nutrients the proper food you notice your mood going up you're going to be a lot happier your life's going to feel you know a lot less stress a lot less sadness a lot less you know you don't feel kind of just grudge down you know that's that energy that kind of just takes you down and I know for me when I don't have energy my mood is just right down with it right or sometimes my body's ready to go but my mind's not and other times it's reversed right and so food has a really big role in controlling this and we you know we can't always control 
the way that we're feeling sometimes, right? It's hard to it's hard to get all of our emotions under control all the time, but there's things that we can do to help improve our moods and to help give us more energy and to fuel our body properly. I talk a lot about, you know, making sure your, you know, our bodies are instruments. So you need to make sure that you're treating your own body properly and loving yourself, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's not just for, you know, your body can move you around and get you from point A to point B. It's also about, you know, fueling your mind and getting your, your brain working properly and, and right, right? So if you ever find a, if you know if you're ever like really tired or maybe you did have like a really big meal that wasn't the healthiest, you just kind of feel off. You feel a little bit slow. Maybe it's just, you know, your brain just doesn't feel like it's functioning properly um, because you haven't given it the fuel that it needs to succeed (laughs) so think about it your brain is always on your brain is always moving it's taking care of your thoughts your movements you know it's taking care of everything your heartbeat your senses everything your brain is on on all the time 24 7 even while you're asleep it's on (laughs) so your brain requires a lot of fuel right and we need to make sure that we're fueling it properly so that it works properly. It's like fueling your car with premium or regular. You know, if you have a if you have a car that takes premium fuel and you fill it with with regular fuel, it's not going to go so well. You know, you have to make sure that you're fueling it properly for for what you need. So, what we eat, what we absorb, the things that we take in has a direct impact on the function of our brain and our moods. So, and then that all ties in, of course, to your mental health and how you're feeling every single day. So there are some, I have seven specific foods that do improve your mental health. I have some other specific foods that can help you with your moods and all that sorts. I'm going to dive into like some scientific things about it today, but mostly I really just want to talk about the importance of, of fueling our body properly, fueling our brain so that we can function to our best of our ability because that's what, that's all what we want, right? <laughs> to function to the best of our ability and we need to be feeling good um, mentally, physically, have the energy, our brain brain needs to be working properly if we are going to achieve all of our goals and get to where we want to be. Um, And if we want to live that happy life that, you know, we want to create for ourselves and we need to be in good moods and have good mental health. And so food all plays a factor in that. It's not just about your body. It's about your mind as well. So (laughs) with all of that being said, um, Certain elements in food can can definitely lift your mood, and this is by releasing neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters are the brain chemicals that basically help your brain cells communicate with one another. So I'm sure you've heard of serotonin, and serotonin is the neurotransmitter that regulates our well-being. You know, it's our happiness, our patience, our energy, our, our calmness, all of that put into one. So... We need to make sure that we are releasing serotonin and so it can lift, lift up our moods. And there has food, there's food that can help with that. So if you're feeling, you know, mentally ill, if you feel depressed, anxious, anything that else is going on, making sure that you have the right diet and that you're feeling your brain properly is really, really crucial um, into getting better. And, you know, there hasn't been a lot of studies or there definitely is not a lot of research saying that like, oh, you can, if you just eat the proper diet, you know, that will, that will treat your mental illness. And that's not true, right? It's, it's, you have to do the full package effect, right? It's it's your nutrients, getting the right food, so fueling your body properly. But there's so many other steps to it, right, that we've talked about, like self-reflection and, and getting help and exercise and all those things. It all plays a role into your mental health. Um, but food is definitely something that is important, and I think it's something that people kind of forget about or they don't realize how much of an impact it really does have on our mental health and our moods. So, but with all my research that I've been doing <laughs> like these days, I just, I find it so interesting the big impact that it does have. So that's why I want to share with, uh, share some information with you today about it. So serotonin is a neurotransmitter you know, it helps us regulate our sleep, our appetite, our moods, our pain, literally so, so many things. So 95% of your serotonin is actually produced in your gastrointestinal tract. And your gastrointestinal tract is lined with 100 million nerve cells, 
or neurons. So with all this being said, that means that the your digestive system isn't just helping you digest your food, but it's also helping... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Guide your emotions, I guess. So the function of your neurons and the production of neurotransmitters like serotonin um, are really influenced by the billions of good bacteria um, that you have. So these bacteria play a very essential role in your health. Um, so it's very important to be having those good bacterias. I'm sure you've heard of all those kind of good bacterias and bad bacterias in your gut and all of that. So it's time for a little bit of a break. But when we get back, I'm going to jump into some more information about those good bacterias and bad bacterias and exactly what they do for you and how it's going to help you mentally. So stay tuned. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. We're talking all about how food improves our mood. <laughs> um, so I'm talking about these good and bad bacteria that we have and the essential roles that it has in your health. So this good bacteria is protecting the lining of your intestines and it ensures that they basically provide a barrier against toxins and what we call bad bacteria um, that kind of limit inflammation. They also improve how well you absorb nutrients from your food, and they activate neural um, pathways that travel directly between the gut and the brain because it's all very closely connected more than we think. <laughs> so there has been some studies that have compared traditional diets like the Mediterranean diet and the traditional Japanese diet or your typical Western diet as we call them, um, they show that the risk of depression is 25% to 35% lower in those people who eat a traditional diet. Um, scientists account for this difference because these traditional diets tend to be high in vegetables, fruits, 
unprocessed grains, um, fish, seafood, um, and kind of just, um, you know, the modest amounts of lean meats and dairy. So they kind of avoid processed and refined foods and sugars, which we're always told to stay away from, right? We're told to stay away from the refined sugars, those, um, you know, the white carbs, the bad carbs that are for you. Um, sometimes we're tell, we're, the thing is, is we're always told to stay away from something. Um, so you have to find out obviously what works for you, but there's definitely certain types of food that can help your good bacteria, give you more good bacteria, fight away the bad bacteria for you. Um, and that's going to help your gut health. And then your gut is solely, so closely linked to your brain in the sense of your moods that when you have healthy gut health, that really improves your mental health as well. So I know it kind of sounds weird, I guess, but like all those unprocessed foods, um, all those, you know, the, the carbs, the refined sugars, things like that, um, they're not, they're not going to help your gut, which means that they're not going to help your brain as well. So this kind of sounds weird, I know, but that good bacteria, it doesn't just influence what your gut digests and absorbs, but it, it, it kind of also affects the degree of inflammation throughout your body. So, and then that helps your mood and your energy level and kind of, it all comes full circle. So it's not just about, you know, your digestion and you're absorbing all that. You know, if you ever feel really bloated and gross after, you know, a meal that you're maybe not super proud about, right? You feel gross, you feel sluggish, that's going to slow down your brain as well. And that's going to also put you in your body, yourself, your energy level, everything's going to go down. So what we eat, especially foods, you know, that contain chemical additives, um, ultra processed foods, all this stuff affects our guts. And it means that it also increases our risk for different diseases. They also contain things like that are made in a lab, basically, so those flavor enhancers, food colorings, things like that, that are not helping our gut health and therefore not helping our mental health either. So we have to make sure that we're eating foods that are, you know, um, they're not refined sugars, it's, they're healthy, they're nutrient dense, um, things that are good for you. And I know you've been told probably to eat healthy all the time, but they really do have an impact on our brains. Um, and it's all because it's so closely linked to our guts. So, you know, processed foods, refined sugars, you know, um, things that are made in a lab, flavor enhancers, food colorings, all of those are so common. And I'm not saying you, you have to cut out absolutely everything, but when we do eat mainly a nutrient dense and healthy diet, um, it really does have a really good impact on our our overall well-being, I guess I should say. So you don't have to cut out everything, but as long as we're actually absorbing, you know, a good portion of these these good nutrients that we need and the healthy fats and the things that are going to help our guts, then that's just going to help you. I'm not saying cut out absolutely everything, but we always have to find that happy medium for us. So there was a recent study um, that says that eating a healthy and balanced diet, um, avoiding those inflammation-producing foods like, you know, all those refined sugars, the starch, the flavor enhancers, the food colorings, things that are made in a laboratory, the things that aren't good for us, um, if you can avoid those and you can eat a balanced diet, then there is you can be protected um, against depression or it can at least help you is what this study says. So basically, they also gave an outline of antidepressants um, food. So there's 12 antidepressant nutrients um, that are related to prevention and treatment of depression. And here's a little bit of a list of some of the foods that contain these nutrients. So oysters, mussels, salmon, um, watercress, spinach, romaine lettuce, cauliflower, and strawberries. All the things that are healthy for us. So now I'm just going to give you some tips uh, for a healthier gut that can lead to your improved mood. So eating whole foods, avoid packaged and processed foods. Like we said, they're really high in unwanted food additives, like the things that are made in the laboratories, preservatives that, that really disrupt our healthy bacteria in our gut. We have to always focus on our guts and that healthy bacteria in it. So instead of like a vegetable or fruit juice, 
Um, just try to increase your intake of fresh fruits and vegetables, um, frozen fruits that, you know, don't have any added sugars or additives are also a good choice if you're not a, you know, you can still buy the frozen stuff, frozen veggies, all that kind of stuff, and it has the same nutrients in it. So find what works for you. Um, you also need to be making sure that you're eating enough fiber, um, and that means a lot of whole grains um, in your diet. So, you know, it's not just about, you know, we don't want those white starchy carbs, but those whole um, whole grains that are going to provide you a lot of fiber. That's really, really important for your gut and your diet. Um, always include some probiotic rich foods. So yogurt without any added sugars. That's the thing with yogurt. I am a huge yogurt person, um, but you really have to be careful about what's added in to your yogurt because yogurt is can be so good for you. There's so many healthy fats, but all the different flavors and things that uh, <laughs> that are added in that make it taste so good aren't always the best for you. So definitely make sure that you're watching out. Um, I always suggest, you know, buying plain yogurt and then sweetening it yourself. You know, get some organic honey or something like that that can help you add some fresh fruit to it. Um, that can always sweeten up your plain yogurt. So you know it's not always the most enjoyable thing, but it is the healthier option for your gut. You're not having all those added refined sugars. So, you know, Reduce your sugar intake at breakfast um, if you can as well. So that means with the yogurt, if you do decide to have yogurt for breakfast, like I said, add some cinnamon, add some um, honey, add some berries, you know, or you can or you can go oatmeal or something like that. Add some add some chia seeds, some hemp hearts, things like that that can help you um, also give you protein and fiber, um, all that good stuff without that added sugar. So. Another good thing, obviously, when we're talking about our guts is making sure that we're eating fermented foods. That's why yogurt is so good for probiotics. So fermented foods that are the best is kefir, but that's another thing that we have to have unsweetened. There's some flavored kefir that is delicious, but has all that extra sugar and things that we don't want. Um, sauerkraut is another really good fermented food. I'm sure you've heard of kombucha, you know, things like that. Those are all promoting a healthy gut. Um, we, if you also eat a balanced seafood diet and lean meat, so a little bit less red meat each week and have, you know, have your chicken instead, that can also help as well. And then always have your, of course, your fruit and vegetables in your diet. And if you can always go organic, they say, um, in these studies as well, you know, having your vegetables no matter what, but if you can do organic that is obviously the most beneficial for you because <laughs> it just gets the most nutrients without any of those added things that we don't need or that we don't even know that's in there. <laughs> All right, it is time for another bit of a break, but when we get back, I have more information to share with you, so don't go anywhere. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing, and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness. We're entering that promo code health and wellness. 
Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. So I mentioned before the break, I have seven foods that uh, help improve your mental health. So let's start with those. Um, the number one is the magical fruit, and uh, that's beans. <laughs> beans. So beans are actually one of the top food choices for a happy and healthy brain believe it or not, because they are full of fiber and antioxidants. Um, they are they're going to keep you full for long. They're going to keep your blood sugar stable and enable you to burn more energy. So that is essential for your good mental health. The next one is leafy greens. Um, you know, always been told to eat your greens, but leafy greens do have a very strong effect on your mental health. So if you regularly consume daily servings of leafy greens, so spinach, kale, collard greens, um, those people were said to have a slower rate of cognitive decline compared to those people who avoid um filling your plates with your greens so always eat your greens and your leafy greens because um, it is definitely beneficial for your brain now this next one um, I've heard this one before so walnuts walnuts are a perfect snack that are actually going to help your long-term brain health believe it or not they are really really crucial for your brain health I guess they do they're full of antioxidants um, they help to um, inhibit oxidation in the brain and the body so a walnut can lead to the growth of new neurons um, which is pretty cool and they help us grow new brain cells and it's an essential aspect of maintaining good mental health in general so eat your walnuts when you have to when you when you get to choose your nuts eat your walnuts <laughs> Um, number four is whole grains. So we love carbs. I'm a carb. I love carbs. I you can't get enough of carbs and it's hard for me because I love my carbs. But making sure that you're eating your whole grains um, is really, really great. Whole grains are rich with an amino acid that helps you to produce serotonin. So that feel good um, neurotransmitter that we need. So we need to eat our whole grains and that can also not just help um, release serotonin and pro sorry produce and release serotonin, but it also helps you maintain a really good sleeping schedule, which we know um, is crucial for your mental health. So eat your whole grains. <laughs> Number five is yogurt. Um, this goes back to your gut health that I mentioned earlier. Um, it's the probiotics. It's, you know, those good uh, bacteria that you need. Um, yogurt is the best. But, of course, definitely make sure that you are not getting all the ad added sugars on with it. So make sure you're careful what kind of yogurt you are eating. And last but not least, number seven um, is oily fish. Oily fish actually has a lot of benefits for us. And oily fish is known as the brain food. So there is so many benefits to oily fish. And most importantly, it's kind of known as that brain food because of the fatty acid um, 
that's called DHA that it has. So DHA is an omega-3 fatty acid. So this improves your short and long-term memory, and then it contributes to your optimal brain health overall. So when you have a diet that's high in omega-3 fatty acids, this can help boost your feelings of your mental health and wellness, and it reduces your levels of anxiety. So DHA... Um, in oily fish, so salmon, uh, trout, prawns, um, that can that's where you can find it. So, if you don't, if you're not a seafood person, there's also a fish oil supplement that you could take um, that can help you. You know, I'm sure you've seen lots of omega three um, supplements and things like that. But that's all because you want the DHA, which is that fatty acid um, that is crucial for your brain health. So if you've ever noticed yourself um, have a really big mood swing after eating certain foods or you've just noticed throughout the day or a pattern in your life maybe that when you eat certain things you have really bad mood swings. So our mood swings are, you know, kind of associated with our blood sugar fluctuations and just imbalances in our in kind of like the nutrients that we have and what's in our body. So we need to make sure that we are not having such huge fluctuations um, with our eating patterns because that can really cause our big mood swings. So always making sure that we are not skipping meals because when you miss a meal, um, that can lead to low blood sugar. And then your body will start to store all this food as fat because you think that you're starving yourself. You don't know when you're going to eat. Your body doesn't know when you're going to eat next. Um, and it's just a bad cycle. So skipping meals can really um, affect your mood swings. So never skip a meal. Have a snack if you can. Do something to keep that, that, that going. And there's no big fluctuations that way. Um, if you also, you might experience some bad mood swings if you cut out an entire food group completely. Um, sometimes if you, you know, if you just decide that you don't want to eat dairy anymore, um, that can affect your moods, um, substantially. But of course, if you're allergic and things like that, then you have to cut those things out. But you always have to make sure that you're taking the supplements. If you have to take a whole food group out of your diet, make sure that you are still getting the right nutrients, um, from other foods then. So if you have low levels of zinc, iron, um, B vitamins, magnesium, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, you know, those can all worsen your mood and it decreases your energy. So always make sure that you are getting the right nutrients and all those vitamins in your diet because that is crucial for your energy, which is crucial for your mental health. Um, as like I've said before too, eating too many refined carbs or refined sugars, um, that can really, that can, first of all, add inflammation in you, so those bread, pastries, and then that causes your blood sugars to rise and fall rapidly. So this can obviously lead to your low energy, and it can make you a little bit grumpy. If you ever feel grumpy after a good old pastry, it sounds weird. It's like, well, food usually makes me happy. But then sometimes you don't, you know, if you actually start paying attention to how you feel after certain foods, you will notice a change. Um, I never really noticed how I felt after certain foods until I really started to pay attention and then it made a difference. Um, so yeah, there's also, we should be eating, um, multiple different times throughout the day, not just kind of one big meal or anything like that. When you set like, um, little small meals that can help so you don't have big fluctuations and then of course you won't have those big mood swings um, and always eat a variety of foods too if you're eating the same thing um, your body is not going to completely handle that well and your guts aren't going to completely handle that well um, over a period of time of course so make sure that you are eating a variety of foods and then as always drink plenty of fluids and especially water um and then get regular exercise. So all of these things add in to making sure that you're eating that right nutritional diet and they all play a factor in your moods and your mental health. Um, if you do find that, you know, eating this type of way is kind of difficult for you, I did come up with some tips um, to help you eat this way a little bit more simple. Um, for me, I'm not a huge person that loves cooking. I just don't, I'm cooking's not for me. I wish I loved it, but I don't. So what I usually do is a one big meal prep a week um, where I organize kind of most of my meals for the week or I usually always do a, like a lots of protein. I'll make, you know, 
bunch of chicken or meatballs or something like that because that's, those are things I don't like doing and I'll cut up all my vegetables and stuff so when you have those things prepared it makes it a lot easier to eat it um so prepare them um also you can always you know try to try to shop and cook with a friend spending time with others um with a friend that's also kind of on the same track wanting to improve your gut health and your mental health by eating healthier a uh, healthier and balanced diet that can be good to do with a buddy helps keep you um on track right but with all of this being said um eat foods that make you happy if eating that pastry makes you happy in that moment i i'm all for it you know don't you know shy away from foods or restrict yourself from eating foods because you don't think it's good for your gut health or your mental health um if you want to eat that pastry, you want to eat that cake, whatever you want to do, of course, do it. That's going to make you happy in the moment, and that's important too. I'm just saying over a long period of time, as long as we are fueling our bodies properly with the right nutrients, um, you know, our neurotransmitters are going to be producing and releasing serotonin and all those good uh, feels that we have inside of us. They'll be re- releasing all that, and you'll just notice so much improvement in your mood and your overall mental health and well-being. So that's all the information that I have for you today. I hope it was beneficial. I hope you learned something new today, and I hope you're inspired to go, you know, maybe do some meal prepping of some really nutrient-dense foods um, that will help your mental health. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. I appreciate you being here today. Please do not forget to hit that subscribe button, like and follow us on social media, and leave a five-star review. I look forward to sharing more with you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.